Hello, my name is Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. Today, I'd like to talk about a class of glaucoma medications called the alpha agonist class. So let's get going. Now, the alpha agonist class has been around for many decades and it works primarily at the ciliary body, which is where fluid in the eye is produced. So what the alpha agonist class does, like most of the topical or eye drop glaucoma medications, is to actually reduce the amount of fluid that's produced by this tissue called the ciliary body. Now, the interesting thing about the alpha agonist class, however, is that that's not the only mechanism that it uses. Like the prostaglandin analog class, it also allows fluid to leave the eye through what's called the uveoscleral pathway, uh, which is what we'd consider to be an accessory pathway. It's not the main pathway. Uh, the main pathway is through the trabecular meshwork, and that's actually where the problem with most open angle glaucoma tends to be is at the trabecular meshwork. So this eye drop not only reduces the amount of fluid that's uh, produced, but it also allows fluid to escape the eye around the primary problem, uh, the trabecular meshwork. Now, the other interesting thing about this class of medications, the alpha agonist, is that there's some evidence that it may actually provide what's called a neuroprotective effect. So an intraocular pressure or IOP independent a separate benefit to the optic nerve, which is a, uh, a central nerve. Now, the, the evidence for this is based on a mouse, a uh, laboratory mouse model in which uh, mice had their optic nerves crushed, so pretty awful. Um, those mice who were treated with an alpha agonist uh, had less damage to their optic nerves than those mice that were not treated with the alpha agonist. Now, uh, crushing an optic nerve is, is pretty different from what happens with glaucoma, which tends to be kind of a, a slow, progressive damage to the optic nerve over many years. But nonetheless, uh, one might posit that if this class of medications can help the optic nerve uh, survive a traumatic damage, then perhaps the class of medications can also help with longer term damage. We don't know for sure, but there is some other evidence that uh, suggests this may be the case, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a bit. Now, then the question arises, okay, well, it's got all these mechanisms, uh, that's nice, but how does it really work? So in humans who use this drop, does it work well? And indeed it does. The bromonidine, uh, which is the primary alpha agonist uh, drug available in the United States, uh, actually works about as well as Timolol, uh, but without many of the systemic side effects of Timolol, uh, but not quite as well as the prostaglandin analog class, which is uh, the most effective uh, topical uh, medication class for uh, treatment of glaucoma. So that's, that's actually uh, you know, very effective, which makes it a very commonly prescribed uh, eye drop. Now, how is this prescribed in terms of, um, you know, what's the opportunity where a physician might say, let's prescribe this class of medications? But although it works quite well, it tends not to be what you would call a first line therapy. Um, most of the time, bromonidine is prescribed as a second line. So after someone has been started on, say, a prostaglandin analog or perhaps Timolol, uh, and the primary reason for that is the dosing uh, that we'll get to in a little bit. Now, as far as how it's supplied, um, bromonidine in the United States is available in the branded name Alpha-GAN-P, which is a 0.1% concentration, and also available generically as a 0. 0.15 and 0.2%. Now the, the brand is preferred because the lower the concentration, the lower the risk of side effects. And we'll talk about those in more detail later. Uh, but also <clears throat> the Alpha-GAN-P uh, uses a special preservative called Purite, which essentially 
keeps bacteria from growing in the bottle. Once the eye drop hits the tear film, the preservative is inactivated. So that decreases the amount of potential damage to the corneal surface, which is possible over time with the most commonly used preservative, benzalkonium chloride or BAC. Uh, the other thing with BAK is that it can potentially cause damage to the trabecular meshwork, which is the part of the drainage system that's already damaged an open angle glaucoma, so you, you certainly want to avoid damaging it further with uh, a drop that's meant to actually prevent damage. Um, so most of uh, the available alpha-GAN, or uh, bromonidine rather, comes in multi-use use bottles uh, and is just bromonidine. But you can also get bromonidine in what's called a fixed combination. A fixed combination is essentially two or more individual medications in one bottle. So you can get uh, bromonidine uh, combined with Timolol, uh, and the brand name for that is Combigan. You can get bromonidine combined with brinzolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that goes by the brand name Simbrinza. And that's a nice combination because there's no uh, real systemic issue uh, since there's no timolol or beta blocker in it. And then there's um, bromonidine plus dorzolamide, which is available through a compounding pharmacy in New Jersey called Imprimis. And the, the nice thing about this particular formulation is that it's preservative free. So no preservative, no damage to the surface of the eye or the trabecular meshwork. So I've already arrived at the office. It seems that I, I am always talking too long here, but there's still a fair amount to go over in this class. So let me, uh, let me go through that and uh, then sum it up. So we've gone over the uh, issues of preservative, uh, how the uh, these this class of medication is uh, supplied. Now, of course, one of the other issues that comes up with any prescription is cost. Now, cost is very much dependent on one's insurance. If the brand is covered by insurance, then that's really what I recommend because of the advantages that we've already talked about. Um, if the brand is not covered, then the two generics that are available, the 0.15% and the 0.2%, have very different coverage among insurance companies. Most insurance companies will not cover the 0.15%, which makes it almost as expensive as the brand. And between the two, I would definitely choose the brand over the generic 0.15. The 0.2% is almost universally covered, uh, but it does have a higher rate of the side effects that we'll discuss in a moment. If your insurance does not cover even the 0.2%, then I recommend that you search for a good price through one of the online sites that can help guide you with cash prices. I recommend goodrx.com uh, to my patients as well as to uh, you know anyone on these videos. Uh, I have no financial relationship with GoodRx. It just seems to work to save my patients uh, a lot of money. So highly recommend that if you're going to pay uh, cash prices. And if you have a high copay, it's worth checking just because your cash price could potentially be less than your copay. Now, how is the bromonidine class or the, the alpha agonist class, uh, primarily bromonidine in the US, uh, used? Well, generally it's prescribed twice a day. And that's true whether it's in the uh, bromonidine only or the fixed combination. There is some evidence that it works better three times a day, but that third time of the day dose, which is generally the middle of the day, is really hard to, to get in and during our busy lives. So I generally recommend on my patients, uh, take it twice a day. Uh, if you remember a middle of the day dose, then bonus, but don't feel guilty about it if you don't get it in because it will still work twice a day. Now, I've talked about or alluded to uh, side effects. It's important to know about side effects with every medication. Of course, most side effects don't occur or are uh, quite mild. And, you know, we're always looking at the risk benefit trade off, uh, the risk of permanent loss of vision with glaucoma versus uh, the side effects. So let's go over the side effects, some of which are pretty mild and some which uh, you know, could be uh, potentially uh, quite bothersome or even serious depending on the, uh, the individual. So local side effects include uh, irritation or a sense of dryness that's true with almost all of the uh, preserved uh, glaucoma medications. Hyperemia, which just means that the, the white part of the eye gets red 
or congested, and that is more common with the higher concentration. So the 0.2% generic has a higher uh, likelihood of resulting in a red eye than the uh, purite preserved 0.1% branded alpha gan P. And then allergic reaction. There's about a 10 to 15% chance of developing an allergy to this class of medications at some point over the course of the therapy. And this risk is higher with the higher concentrations. Another reason why I, preserve, I prefer the um, Purite preserved alpha gan P 0.1%. Right. Dry mouth can be an issue. And then a uh, mild pupil dilation. It's not usually notable in those with dark irises, but in those who have light irises, uh, a, a mild asymmetry can be noted if, if bromonidine is taken just in one eye. If it's taken in both eyes, most people don't notice it at all. And then the other interesting thing is it can actually lift the eyelid uh, just a bit, usually by only a half a millimeter to a millimeter, uh, which can actually be advantageous. Uh, so for many older adults who have a bit of a ptosis, which means a drooped lid, um, by often a millimeter or two, uh, this can actually help the cosmetic appearance. Of course, if it's not desirable, then if it's used again in just one eye, that can be an issue. And then there are the issues of systemic side effects. Now, fortunately for the bromonidine class, unlike the beta blocker class, systemic side effects are, are quite rare in healthy adults, uh, but they can be a bit more common in the elderly and glaucoma being more common as we get older, that's important to be aware of. Uh, but they're especially worrisome among children. Uh, so these, these side effects include a uh, headache, again, quite rare, but occasionally seen, low blood pressure. Uh, so just like the beta blocker class, the alpha agonist class can lower blood pressure, but the really worrisome things um, are lethargy and apnea. Apnea means discontinuation of breathing. So breathing just stops. Uh, and those two things are actually a pretty high risk among infants and young children. So bromonidine is, is generally what we call contraindicated in children under five years old. Now, how can you minimize the side effects? Uh, well, of course, try as much as possible uh, to prescribe just to uh, healthy adults. It's not always possible. So be aware of the side effects. Avoid it uh, in young children. Uh, but then there's also the, the issue that we've already talked about and that using the lower concentration forms of bromonidine will reduce the likelihood of all of the side effects. Unfortunately, the side effects of um, uh, red eye and an allergy are not going to respond to the same kind of uh, treatment, the either punctal occlusion or the balled up tissue that, um, that would benefit those systemic side effects. Now, one other thing that's worth discussing is interaction with other medications. Fortunately, with bromonidine, there aren't a lot of interactions with other classes of medications. Uh, and the one class that it is known to interact with, which is the monoamine oxidase or MAO inhibitors, uh, are hardly prescribed anymore. Those are actually the uh, first class of antidepressants approved by the FDA in the US, but we've pretty much moved away from the MAOIs. Um, with the SSRIs uh, and, uh, and tricyclics and things like that. So it's unlikely that uh, that interaction would occur now, but it's, it's worth stating that the bromonidine or al alpha agonist class should not be prescribed with uh, MAO inhibitors. So in summary, uh, the alpha agonist class is an effective class that works through multiple mechanisms, may have a neuroprotective benefit, uh, is generally prescribed as a second line uh, treatment. Although there is an exception to that that I neglected to mention, and that is that those who have what's called normal tension or low tension glaucoma may actually enjoy an added benefit in terms of protecting them from progressive loss of, her, of their visual fields over time compared to say Timolol. So both Timolol and bromonidine were studied uh, and even though they both lowered the intraocular pressure about the same amount, those with normal tension glaucoma who were given bromonidine actually did better over time. And so that is one case where bromonidine may be a good first line agent is for someone with normal tension glaucoma. Uh, so to continue the summary back to that, 
Um, the side effect profile is usually uh, uh, mild and well tolerated, uh, with the exception of in children. And uh, it can be quite affordable depending on the insurance coverage as there are generics available, although the brand is uh, definitely preferable in this class of medications. So anyway, I know this has been a very long video, uh, but uh, again, I feel that the topics of intraocular pressure lowering classes of medications is so important because almost everybody who has glaucoma is taking one or more of these medications. And it's important to be aware of the pluses and minuses of each class, the nuances, the costs, all of these things. Uh, so I think that it's probably worthwhile spending 15 plus minutes together on this topic. Anyway, I hope you agree. And uh, if so, I'll keep making these videos and uh, hopefully providing some useful information that clearly uh, there's no time in a typical office visit with an ophthalmologist to have a 15 plus minute conversation on one class of, uh, of glaucoma medications. So this is my commuting opportunity and, um, and parking lot opportunity to uh, share this with you. All right, have a good day.